with the man, with the legend. What a fight. Yeah, it was, uh, like I said, it was a beautiful moment in there. I know it's strange to hear such an idea, but I think for people like me and Rosal that it's, uh, it's like our church. So for us, we feel like we spoke to God. Go on. What was the key, the main key to win that fight? Uh, the main key was hit and don't get hit. Uh, use my feet, not get into a brawl with him. He's very stockily built. Uh, I also kind of figured he would fight a lot with his chin and head down. Not that you're, you're supposed to fight chin down, but m more so like a more bent over stance, which uh, increases the risk of hitting around the top of the head. So I, I don't, you don't want to break your hand. And uh, maybe I shouldn't have clinched as much. I did use the clinch to wear him out some, but by being in the clinch, we were clashing heads some. I, I caught a few uppercuts and short punches, uh, which doesn't you know, take very much to, to cause some damage, especially with someone who hits as hard as Rosal. So uh, maybe, maybe I should have just stayed on the outside, picked a lot more, uh, and used the angles. But uh, I don't know, I kind of felt like by putting the pressure on him, I'd, get him, I'd finish him quicker. But uh, yeah, who knows? And great dirty boxing. Yes, yes. But I mean, uh, as much as I was able to land shots inside too, he, he also was able to land some. And so uh, with, with bare knuckle, you really don't want to, well, I won the fight. But... I'd prefer not getting hit as much, so, sure. you know. Did he hurt you in any shot? Uh, well, I mean, I, he never stunned me, but, uh, you know, you can feel it. Uh, you can feel that, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's danger on the end of his punches. And so, being big heavyweights, any one shot could do it. But also, being big heavyweights, we can take punishment, too. And uh, by being in good position, the punches don't really hurt you. But you still know that the power is there. Because you, know? you take two big, huge elbows, but I don't see in your eyes anything after this. No, that was a matter of head position, so they're not landing, they weren't landing with all their power through the target. And that's because I can just feel what's coming and uh, going with the power a little bit and not being caught with the tip of the elbow. And do you have some injuries right now? Mm, my hand is swollen from hitting him. <laughs> and I've got a cut on my finger, which is probably from hitting his tooth. Can you give us your thoughts about Marcin Ruzalski and will you drink your bourbon with him tonight? I, will, I do not have my bourbon, sadly. We, we're all sold out. Our, our Warbringer blend, yeah. we sold all out of that uh, of availability and the Warmaster Edition single barrel, that's been sold out. We pre-sold the next three barrels. Next time yeah. you bring it. Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> I would love to. I would love to bring, uh, bring my bourbon over here to Poland. But uh, we're going to drink, be it uh, Slibovitz or vodka or bourbon, whatever. We're going to drink because we have something to celebrate. It, it, I don't look, yeah, we know about winning and losing, both of us. And there is some sadness in that. But I feel like we should celebrate our chance to really be alive tonight and uh, for us to be, to be able to worship at uh, the altar of fighting. So I, I want to make sure that he feels as beautiful as I do right now, as much as possible. We've talked uh, before the fight and you said that you're gonna prove uh, uh, that you are not only the grappler. Uh, are you satisfied with your boxing today? Uh, I mean, yes and no, I'm never satisfied. I always want to get better. There's always things I could have done. You know, even getting stitches, I'm thinking about, ah, maybe you should have done this or you should have set this up instead. And, uh, you know, there was a third round I was getting ready for. So there was things that coach and I were talking about and now I didn't get to do them. Um, but as far as boxing, I've been boxing a long time. I kind of really started boxing under a... a Coach Bumblebee, who, who coached uh, Pinkland Thomas to a world title shot, uh, Willie Ray Briscoe. Uh, I then boxed a lot with Oscar the Boxer Muniz in L.A., uh, former Olympic auditorium level boxer, very slick guy. Uh, and I've, I trained a lot with Stitch Duran. And then I've been with uh, Jamal Abdullah for quite some time, who trained Joe Hanks, uh, Prince Charles Martin. And I would, you know, Joe Hanks, Charles Martin, Ro Ro Rosvan Kojanu, the Romanian heavyweight. You know, those were all sparring partners of mine. So, so boxing for me is actually, you know, um, it's, it's really comfortable. Uh, and um, boxing in a boxing environment, even boxing uh, in a standard boxing match is different than this. And this is different than boxing in MMA. And so every, every combat sport has its different rhythm and timing. And, um, you know, it was kind of nice to just to focus a bit more on just the hands. But we have clinching, we have elbows. So it's not exactly the same. On the cage interview, you said something about possibly fight in KSW. Do you have some dreamy opponents from Polish Federation? You know, my 
I'd, I'd spoken to KSW before, and it, you know, it's kind of silly. Uh, my thought was I wanted to fight Pujanowski only because I wanted to see if I could suplex him. <laughs> I, I know that, and you know, no, no disrespect to, to Pujanowski. I'm a very far more experienced fighter. Just like when it comes to any style of weight training, he's my master, right? I, uh, there's nothing I could tell him. You know, he knows so much more than I do. Um, so it was just like a silly thing, but it also was kind of because I watched him do strongman and, and just to see, um, I know he's not a fighter like me per se, but to see him be a strongman, to get in the ring, to fight, to, to, to know that he has a training background and just to see a human being of such capability, uh, you know, he really amazes me. And uh, I also fought a strong man once before, back uh, in Hawaii. Uh, I fought uh, Yu Yuha Tukasari, who was the world's strongest man at 100 kilos. So I just wanted to say, can I armbar Pujanowski? I don't know, you know, it's that kind of thing. You know, I really don't want to, I don't want to, like, I don't, I'm not trying to go out there. I never thought about like, oh, you know, I'm going to kill him. I just thought like, man, what's it like to know someone that strong? You know, that's so crazy. Champion, heavyweight champion in KSW mm -hmm. is Phil DeFries, and a lot of fans say that no one from Poland have the chance to beat him in mm -hmm. KSW. Maybe it's some possibility for you. It's a nice idea to fight for the KSW belt. Well, fighting for championships is always, you know, that's a that's a goal, right? I mean, it, fighting for champion Phil is on a good winning streak. So I'm actually really kind of proud about seeing Phil turn his career around. It's a really beautiful story. Um, and one of my students, uh, Ishii, beat Phil DeFries before in Japan. Um, nobody in Poland can beat him. Maybe we're just not looking in the right place. Or maybe... No, maybe. I don't say that about uh, Polish uh, UFC fighters from heavyweight. Oh, right, 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 right. But may maybe there are... Maybe there are... Maybe there's someone in Poland on the, on the come-up. Maybe there is someone here with the right training that could be a good challenge or could beat Phil. I don't know. You know, I don't want to discount such a, a country that made the, uh, what, the, the Hussars. So, <laughs> Polish people are pretty tough. Speaking about Japan, well, benchmark for the KSW is the Pride shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, of course. And that's, that's why I've always kept my eye on KSW because they understood the, the, the incredible experience that is being at Pride. And I talked to Kowalski and he said how he was there in Japan seeing it. And I think uh, KSW is a very underestimated show on the world level. It is, uh, I mean, there's hardly anywhere in the world that, that presents such um, a stadium level show, such an event. Also, no audience tonight, but what a production. This thing looked beautiful from, from backstage. I mean, as someone that puts his own events on with Josh Barnett's Bloodsport, Looking at the production, I'm just going, wow, this looks so cool. Like, they did such a killer job for nobody being here. You remember your fight with Pavel Nastula in yes. Pride Days? Yeah, really? Yes, it was a really rough one. Uh, it, would have been, it would have been difficult no matter what. Even at my 100%, Pavel is... Olympic gold medal athletes like that are different level. And Pavel is <laughs> arguably one of the greatest modern judoka ever. Uh, I really feel like... It was kind of like it's a special thing that I got to fight him, uh, especially with the history of catch as catch can versus judo and how uh, Ad Santel challenged all the Japanese judoka in, in America and in Japan uh, at one point, defeating most of them until it got to the point that he was starting to get draws. And then it's like, OK, I'm done. You guys are never going to stop. So uh, but uh, for me, like I beat uh, Nakamura and then I beat uh, um, uh, Yoshida, another gold medalist, and then I beat Nastula. So submitting judoka as a catch wrestler, there's some history there. But uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a long series of fights in a row, and I was really pretty dog-tired. But uh, Nastula brought it, and uh, you know, he hit me with some good punches. I was like, wow, man, uh, this guy's really going for it. And I hit him with a knee right up the center, hit him right in the face. Didn't flinch. And I'm like, God, what is it going to take? And he managed to take me down, and his position was strong. And I'm like, all right. By the second round, I'm like, that's enough of this. We got to, we, this, this isn't, no more of this crap. He, this guy's trying to knock your head off. Let's get rid of him, you know. So I managed to catch his leg. And part of that was because I knew that on that escape, as a judoka, he couldn't help but go after the arm. But the arm wasn't going to be there. And then the toe hold was just something where he was completely out of his element. And that behemoth entrance tonight, it was awesome. Well, Behemoth was here. 
So, you know, I had to represent my, 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 my friends. I had to represent, you know, metal, uh, being metal to the core. And uh, in a way, this is a bit of my, my love song and respect to Poland so that I could go in the ring with some of Poland with me, not, not as an uh, opponent to Poland, although I like that Poland backs their fighter. I like that all the Polish fans would support Rosal, even on my page, you know, as long as they're not disrespectful. But I love that they, they're like, he's our guy. He's our Polish fighter, and we're happy for him. And I, want, I, love, I love seeing that. Um, so, but, I, but for me, I have no opposition to Poland. Even as, a, even as an American and being glad of who I am as an American, once I get in that ring, I am just a man. And I'm a man speaking you know, through my body and my fists. Congrats, enjoy your stay in Poland. Oh, I, I will, I really will. I hope I get to see as many castles and churches and museums as possible. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys.